thank you everyone for for being with us in this second uh, stage of the tower panel, a panel for and on translations. On this occasion, we'll have uh, Latin America and and Africa. Okay. Um, our hyperledger community has more than 73,000 members in 180 meetup groups and the largest number of tools and applications of the LT. Its documentation courses and seminars, however, are still mainly in English, a language 80% of the world population do not speak. Hyperledger Latino America hosts this as a call for we believe that translate is to include, to understand, to learn, and to save. Tower of Babel is a collaborative complement to an initiative that Anthony O'Dowd and David Boswell, which is uh, with us, began to 2019 to translate hyperledger fabric documentation. We want to engage more collaboration and we want to explore future strategies to include languages and cultural mindsets. Um, I'm very informal, so rather than doing formal presentations, I would ask each of you, um, Claudio, Umar, and David, introduce yourselves, please. Claudio. Sure, thank you. Hello, Alfonso, for that introduction. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Claudio Severos Paz. I'm from Argentina. I'm one of the co-founders of the Latin American chapter as well. I'm in charge of the translation effort for Spanish translation. And as Alfonso said, uh, we think this is very it's essential to have a deeper understanding on the technology and what we can do. For us, Translating also means that we are taking this project and bringing that into our culture, right? We're, here in Latin America, we are very proud of our culture and Spanish, Spanish language is one of the most distinctive characteristics. So thank you. Thank you very much for this panel. Thank you for everything that you're doing. No, thank you for all your help, Claudio. Omar. Yes, uh, um, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Alfonso, for holding this panel, and uh, thank you, David, for being here with us. Um, yes, I'm uh, Omar Fall. I'm from Senegal. I'm uh, the lead of the community here in Senegal, South Africa, and I'm also working with uh, some other global, some other African uh, epilogue chapter to form some kind of collective to have more momentum and to have more to reach more people and uh, I'm pretty active in um, also the 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 hyperledger translation uh, from English to French so I am here today to talk about uh, that initiative of difficulties and uh, why um, translating things in uh, Translating documentation in French is relevant for us Africans, and uh, yes, we we are going to discuss this uh, later. Thank you. Thank thank you, Omar. David, for all of us, you need no introduction. But for the rest of the <laughs> yeah. people from outside, please uh, tell tell them who you are. Well, for anybody I haven't met yet, my name is David. I've been involved with Hyperledger for about three and a half years now. Before I came to Hyperledger, I'm new to blockchain, but I've been involved in open source communities for, for around 20 years. And one thing I've observed is that uh, um, translations and localizations are something that more mature open source communities uh, you know, have done and, and do really well, because as Alfonso has said, we are a global community. There are people literally all over the world who are interested and not all of them speak English. So, you know, inviting them to come in and contribute in their own language, in their own culture, in their own ways, you know, in a way that's appropriate to them, you know, is something, again, that I've observed in other communities. So, you know, I just wanted to introduce that as a, you know, contribution that we could do in the hyperledger community. So I'm thrilled to see that people 
have been interested in that, have started doing that, do, you know, hopefully want to do more of that. And so my role is here is just to support if there's something that the group of people doing the translations, doing the localizations want to do, you know, you know, that's what an open source community is, is the, the people involved, you know, choose to do something. So I'm, I'm here to support, you know, whatever the people interested in, in this activity are, are trying to do. And, you know, we can, we can put tools or processes or, or whatever sort of support we need, you know, that you need, you know, we can, we can help with. So I'm really interested to hear, you know, what, what comes out of this discussion. Thank you, David. Renato Teixeira, who is also a member of this panel, um, the electric uh, utility in his neighborhood is doing maintenance today. All days. Okay. Yeah. So he, he might be able to join us. Uh, he might not. Um, if, if he cannot make it, uh, he has sent his, his apologies in, in, in writing. And it would be quite a loss for, for everyone. But maybe that's an excuse to have another webinar uh, very soon with, with all the languages that, that we couldn't get in these two sessions. My name is Alfonso Govela. I'm part also co-founder of the uh, Hyperledger Latino America chapter. And uh, I'm a co-chair of the learning materials and development group at, at Hyperledger. So without uh, further ado, I, I would like to ask uh, Claudio, Omar, and David, um, each of you, you know, in terms of length of the translations, uh, where are you, or we in the case of Claudio, where are you now in this effort of translations? What challenges did you encounter getting to where we are? And how would you like to proceed for, for the future? What are you? What challenges? What do you see for the future? Who wants to start? Okay. Claudio? Yeah, I'll go. Thank you. So where are we in the process? We started this process last year where we were able to put everything together, every tool and every workflow together. We actually have a GitHub repository where you have all the code where you can help translate. And in there, we also have a project management tool because at the end of the day, we are handling this like any other project, right? We have over 200 files to translate. I think we are somewhere in the 20% of it. Uh, the challenge that we faced was this issue where actually doing a translation requires some technical knowledge because as I said, the, the workflow for all of this is by having a GitHub workflow where you have to pull, uh, let's say pull some code in your, your computer, do the translation, then push that back. So you need some technical knowledge to do so. So our greatest challenge was first to uh, help people who wants to translate to get to that point. And this, what we decided at the, you know, when we found out that people are were struggling, we decided to streamline the process where we actually have a, a, a rule forms where you can sign, put your address, and we send you a, one specific uh, file to translate, and then we merge and we do all the technical chores on our side. Because as I said, most of the, not everybody is, a techni is technical when it comes to translation, right? We have business, business people and they get frustrated when they have to do this whole pull request workflow, right? So basically that's where we are. We have streamlined the process through Google Forms and you know some uh, management and um, we are glad to receive some help. What, what would you like for the future? Or, or you want to say that for after, after the rest? I think sure. it's better sure. to do a decision. Umar, Umar uh, tell us about where you are and the challenges that you faced. Yes, uh, thank you for the part. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, as you French explained is, to me. Uh, mm. Yeah, yes, um, French is, uh, is uh, um, I, I think I'll start by uh, by speaking about my motivation. Um, like I said earlier, um, when we heard French, uh, French language, we always think about the, the European continent, the, 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 the country France. Um, but it appears, and if you are looking in the Francophonie website, with the the organization who is uh, in charge of the development of the language across across the world uh, you are see, seeing that uh, let me see uh, 59 percent of the french speaker are living in africa and there are not the people who are learning french or speaking french in the in their um, work or administrative uh, journey across uh, no it, the, those are people who are speaking french on a daily basis in their real life so 59 percent of the speaking people are living in africa and that is huge uh, africa is uh, uh last day i was kidding by saying that uh french is now an african language and that is the reality. That is uh, the thing that exists. I, I, and uh, Claudio, I know you have the same, uh, maybe the same view because Spanish is not an, an, an Spain language anymore. Because you know, uh, regarding the number of people speaking about uh, speaking uh, Spanish, uh, uh, yes. Um, so what I try to achieve when I uh, created the Ipelger Senegal community is. People are willing to participate in the meeting, in the learning process, in the hackathon, but they don't have access to the learning materials because all the conferences we are doing right now, uh, for example, are in English. Um, all the documentation are mainly or first in English, then months later are translated in uh, in, uh, in another language. And maybe in uh, during this that time frame uh, the version of the software are evolved and new functionality are appearing and so we have to start the process again of learning and uh, being up to date so in 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 the part of the world that i'm living in in the african in the french speaking african countries we are late we are behind the the english speaking part of the of africa so there is two to Africa. It is very, very subtle if you are not living here, but there is two two Africa and the English speaking Africa is way ahead, uh, the French speaking Africa because of this gap in um, in knowledge acquiring in uh, translation and such things. So that's the, the, the thing I want to, to tackle. I want to give us some chance to be uh, as a, as a, as uh, accurate and as uh, performant as the English speaking uh, country and give more chance to the young people who are here and who wants to learn new new exciting technology like blockchain and all and uh, yes that is an initiative I've started with the help of David uh, six months uh, behind we are actually we are just three people <laughs> me included but my hope for the future like uh, is uh, to have more momentum and to have a more diverse profile because uh, like you said claudio the the first uh, constraint is technical people are not uh, sometime maybe not all the people but there are people who are not at ease with the with the um, the pull request thing the git the push the the commit and things and the other required um, the other required um, uh, uh, thing that people must have to participate is people must be bilingual. They must speak French and English, and that also is a barrier um, that we are trying to to tackle by with the help of uh, automatic translators and uh, and that kind of thing. So those are the two barriers and the the 
the the we must have more people participating in the initiative so for now uh, i have just uh, translated the the front page and one other page uh, of the document documentation of epilogue fabric uh, but yes for the future i really want uh, more people more documentation and a more fast translation process uh, for the epilogue fabric documentation for a start and maybe go to go and translate so to uh, indi and uh, um, and also brick and platform of uh, of the epilogue initiative so yes that that we may have lost Alfonso, but I can answer the yeah. question about challenges. And I would agree with what you, Omar, and Claudio have both said. I mean, I'll address both of them from my perspective. The, the technical challenge is real. You know, we have, obviously, there's languages that have successfully you know, navigated that. You know, we do have, as you say, the beginning of a French translation, the Spanish translation, you know, as coming along as well. So, you know, it is solvable, but, uh, you know, Ryan and I, who have been trying to support other languages, have seen that be a barrier that has stopped uh, the progress of several other languages that, you know, initially wanted to come in. You know, we did do a big push, you know, a couple months ago, inviting people into the community. We saw people start on their, you know, contribution journey and then get blocked and not be able to get past that, you know, to, to your own point. We're a very developer-centric community, we have very developer-centric tools, and you might have all the skills to do technical translation. You might be bilingual, you might, you know, be perfectly capable of doing that, but get stuck on, you know, the GitHub workflow part, which is exactly what we saw. People were enthusiastic, got increasingly frustrated trying to get over that hurdle, and then didn't, and then we lost, you know, they, they went away from the community. So that's been a shame. So one thing I would like to see is better tooling that is, you know, a better fit for, you know, a translator versus a developer. You know, I think in a big enough community, you know, I think that can be solved with enough people who have enough, you know, of a diverse skill set. You know, if you're part of a larger team and somebody on that team does have the technical skills, you yourself don't need them. You can collaborate with that person who does have the technical skills. But for the smaller languages that are just getting started where it's just starting off with one person, you know, they kind of have to be able to do all and all of those things in order to move forward. So they, you know, it, it's a it's a block initially. I, I And then to add to Omar's point, I think once something is up and running, we can bring more people into that community. You know, we, we are in a very fortunate position where we have a lot of, you know, Hyperledger has a lot of channels that we can get information out. So once you're up and running, you know, we can share what you're doing, invite more people to get involved. But it's that initial step where it's really probably just that one person trying to get going where I think it's probably the most fragile because they need to be able to navigate all of that on their own and can't yet delegate to other people within the group. But I think the good news is we can bring more people in. I mean, Umar, correct me if I'm wrong, but for example, you did a, a, a meetup recently in French and I think you connected in that meetup with somebody who ended up joining the translation effort, if I remember what you'd shared with me recently. So I think, you know, if if a language that's getting started wants to take advantage of all the, you know, channels that Hyperledger has, we can do a tweet about it, we can do a blog post about it, we can do a meetup about it. You know, I, I think there are ways where we can connect you with, you know, people who want to help out. But, you know, it's just, I think the biggest challenge is just when it's that one person trying to start a new language and there's just a lot for that one person to navigate, you know, how do we make it easier for them? Uh, um, so I'd love to hear if there's ideas, again, maybe there's better tools or, or better documentation or better processes, you know, that might help at that point. Yes, um, as you say, I, I'm uh, rec recruiting people <laughs> when I'm doing uh, some meetup in French because, uh, like I said earlier, I'm. Uh, in a French um, part of the world, and yes, it, the first step are, are if we are we all agree that the first step is the the the, mo the most harder one, and um, yeah, uh, we have to see some ways to to simplify the process by, like you say, if you have uh, some kind like uh, ten or more people, it's more easy to have people do the the technical stuff in the name of the others, but some in when when we start we have to navigate through the documentation and lead all the people to through through it and yes that is the process we have to make but 
we are we are doing it maybe it's not as fast as we want here in uh, the french uh, community but yes we are we are we are trying our best to to progress in that way with the help of all the villager community yeah. yes for sure uh, as i said before one of the things that we put in for the community and i think it's taking some traction is this option where we send one specific file to some translator and that person gets to translate everything that is inside that file because one of the other challenges is those files are not just text files right they have some comp some technical complications so what we did is we posted a google form where any collaborator can just log in and say hey i want to to, to do some translation and we send as one self-sustained uh, file. We don't send the entire project. We don't. We take the, the technical burden from them. Of course, we have to do it later. But right now, I think what we need the most is people who can actually translate and help. As Omar said, having that dual language, right? English and Spanish. Now, in our case. And most of the time, those people aren't technical, not at all. So. And that process has worked. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's been working. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But you know, it it on the downside, we have a little extra overhead in managing, right? sure. managing that process. But I think that way we were able to harness a lot of contribute uh, contributions that we weren't able to do it on our own. That is essential to us because one of the it's not only moving past the technical aspect, but it's actually a, a very long documentation, right? It needs a lot of hands working on this. It's it's a lot it's a lot of work for one or two people alone. So we need help on that for sure. And my thought is this might I mean again other open source communities have done this so you know this might be a problem that we can, you know, learn from others who've solved it just to share. And, you know, you may have already seen this link, but I'm going to drop a link to Mozilla's translation localization tools. So, you know, maybe there are things that we could just adapt, adopt, you know, from other communities, you know, we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel ourselves, you know. Totally, totally. The, the thing about translation is that when we started, everybody, when everybody started, we already have a specific workflow that we have to follow, right? So, uh, because you need to write it in a certain way, you need to do a pull request, and you need to uh, push that to the, the main repository, right? So, even though that's what we did, we try to improve or help the people who isn't technical, but I'm not sure how uh, uh, far away we can go from this the, the established workflow right that's the the challenge for sure i apologies i was <laughs> popped out of hobby. no worries <laughs> no problem <laughs> okay uh, but, but, um, so Yes, I, I would like to add that um, for me, translation is uh, is a very acute subject uh, in in that global world that we are living in. Uh, a global world, a world that we were big, but we were bigger with the upper, with the, the 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 pandemic of the coronavirus. So now we are all interacting because I know I I did. I had the luck, the chance to know plenty of people since the beginning of the all remote, all uh, all uh, and the, all, all webby thing, and uh, that I, I'm glad. Uh, I'm uh, I'm glad, uh, thankful for 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 those people I know. But in the in the the translation uh, is a very uh, like I say acute because it is a, a matter of diversity of of inclusion of, of people of uh, underrepresented uh, minorities like uh, you, you know you all know that we have sexual uh, 
you have sexual minority, you have uh, um, gender or of, of racial uh, thing uh, question who are, who are very uh, very actual nowadays. But the one uh, gap or the one uh, minority people don't see often is the the language minority, the people who are not uh, speaking the dominant languages. And since we are here in Africa, uh, because I uh, I speak from that point of view, we are very close to the Western world, to the Western, to the uh, European or American world, uh, a little less to the Chinese or Asiatic world. So we we don't feel very you don't feel very included in all those process of technology or sharing in all now we we are seeing more and more uh, orientation toward africa but yes uh, being a translator being uh, someone who allow people to access to knowledge is very important for me and for uh, i think all the people who are participating and that is a very very uh, big topic for me of diversity of inclusion of this part of the world definitely definitely sure. Sure. Yeah. that's that's a key key issue translation mm -hmm. is inclusion for yeah, sure there are many gaps as you mentioned there's but the gap of translation is there's also everyone sorry there's yeah. also one big benefit that we got from the translation effort which is that once you start doing this translation, you get a deeper understanding of the technology, right? That's one of, for me, was one of the biggest uh, goals or, or benefits of class, right? I, as you can see, I can't read in English, but going through the process of understanding that English text and translating into Spanish, it forces us to understand from the inside out how it works. Right. So last year, this as a as an anecdote, last year from the Latin America chapter, we we gave away a free hyperlogic fabric course, right? And one of the things that all of the attendees were saying is that they can't or they were weren't able to understand the uh, let's say the documentation. That's why we started in the first place. And after we we move along, more people started to join that, that course, right? People felt more secure and they felt uh, at ease knowing that they can read this documentation in their own language because that way they were it were easier to understand, right? But for me, the message I want to to say to everybody who is watching is the what you get in return of doing this effort is the knowledge of the technology and what you can do and everything, you know, it, it's all about uh, the knowledge. I agree with both of those benefits. I mean, absolutely, you know, inviting people in in their own language makes the community more inclusive. It's a huge barrier to get involved with the community if they're not speaking your own language, literally. And I agree with Claudio. I mean, this is this is helping people learn the technology, which I think ultimately, you know, is something we are all interested in. I'll just add a third benefit, if I could just share, you know, feedback I heard from the Fabric Documentation Working Group that you know did work with the translators. It even makes the English documentation better. What they heard is that they would have somebody translating, you know, the information, and that that person would have to read the English documentation very closely, so they would get patches from those translators, so the you know to make the English documentation better. So it's not just taking something, putting it into another language. Everybody's also collaborating on the you know the root documentation itself and improving it. So you know I think this makes it more available to other people and it improves the English version as well. So yeah, that's just yet another benefit. We're running out of time, but what you have said is that to translate is to include, to understand, and to improve in our own mindsets. Okay. With that, um, I'd like to refer you to the link that David just uh, posted in the chat. And that's a way of getting involved in this work. We'll welcome every help you can give us.
Yeah, absolutely. Please do join that link on the chat channel if you're interested in continuing the discussion. Yes. Sure, total. I'm uh, there, yes, so and, just ping me. Yeah, or ping us all. But just I like to finish by saying, uh, uh, click please in the, on this link because translation is as important for contributing to open source project that contributing code or anything for that matter. It translation is as important as writing the code. So if you can't write code, please help us translate and uh, get people access to that knowledge. Thank you all. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Mar. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Alfonso. That is Thank Claudio. You. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye everyone.